Hi and welcome to week 9 of economics. So we will delve into the world of market structures, exploring the two ends of the spectrum. Um, perfectly competitive markets and monopolies this week. So we'll begin by describing the characteristics and giving examples of perfectly competitive markets. A perfectly competitive market is a theoretical model characterized by several key features. Firstly, there are numerous small firms, none of which have the power to influence market prices. They are price takers, not price makers. Examples of such markets include agriculture, where individual farmers grow and sell products like, uh, say, wheat or corn, with no ability to set prices. Secondly, the products in a perfectly competitive market are homogeneous, meaning they are identical uh, in the eyes of consumers. An example is the market of standardized commodities like crude oil or basic agricultural products. In a perfectly competitive market, there is an ease of entry and exit for firms, meaning new businesses can enter the market easily and existing ones can leave. A classic example is the restaurant industry, where numerous small eateries can enter and exit without significant barriers. Finally, perfect information is a, is a hallmark of these markets. Consumers and firms have complete and accurate information about prices and products, enabling rational decision making. Now, while perfectly competitive markets are characterized by low barriers to entry, some markets are quite the opposite. Two common barriers to entering a market are economies of scale and government regulations. So economies of scale occur when larger firms have a cost advantage over smaller ones. For instance, in the automobile manufacturing industry, the massive capital required for facilities and the benefits of producing high volume uh, at a higher volume make it challenging for new entrants to compete effectively. Government regulations can also pose significant barriers. In industries like pharmaceuticals, strict regulations and the need for extensive drug testing can make it expensive and time-consuming for new firms to get, up, to get approval for their products. In a perfectly competitive market, prices and output are determined by the intersection of supply and demand. Each firm operates at the point where marginal co cost equals price which is also equal to the marginal revenue. This results in a situation where firms produce at an efficient level known as the allocatively efficient level, meaning resources that are used most effectively. Prices in these markets are determined solely by supply and demand forces, with no individual firm having the power to influence the market price. So, um, Let's now shift to monopolies, a market structure at the other end of the spectrum. So a monopoly is characterized by a single firm that is the sole provider of a particular good or service. Uh, key features would include something like no close, to, no close substitutes. Monopolists often have, offer products with no close substitutes. For example, a local electric company might be the sole provider of electricity in an area. Uh, there are high barriers to entry. Unlike perfectly competitive markets, monopolies have high barriers to entry. These can include uh, legal restrictions, uh, control over essential resources, or significant economies of scale. So Microsoft's near monopoly in personal computer operating systems is a classic example. Mon market power is another hallmark. Monopolies have substantial market power, meaning they can set prices above marginal cost. This can lead to higher prices and reduced output compared to perfectly competitive markets. Now, in contrast to perfectly competitive markets with perfect information, monopolies often benefit from uh, information asymmetry, where they have more information than consumers. So... These are the main points that we will be covering this week. 
Um, I hope to see you all in class and to work with you very soon. Thank you.